let's do some detective work, shall we? Imagine that I find my favorite candy bar has gone missing from where I left it on the kitchen counter. How would I figure out who the culprit is? Let's trace back from the options I have at hand. The only people in the house are my parents and my older brother, Ted. My parents don't really eat candy, so that makes Ted my prime suspect. Also, there are those chocolate fingerprints he left on his door handle. Classy, Ted. What I did there was figure out the answer with back solving, which is a lot like deductive reasoning. Most of the time when you're working through a problem, you'll be writing and solving your own equations. But sometimes you can plug in your answer choices to save time and effort. I'm here to tell you about this handy trick that helps you avoid needless algebra, which is definitely something to celebrate. But before you throw yourself a party, let's work through a problem using our new strategy. We'll start with a pro tip. You'll know that you can back solve when you're given an equation or an expression and ask for the value of a variable. With that information, let's take a look at an example that might appear on the test. The question asks, what is the solution to the equation 4x minus the sum of negative 2x plus 5 equals negative 3? A is negative 1 half, B is negative 1 third, C is 1 fourth, D is 1 third, and E is 1. We could solve this equation by combining like terms and solving for x, but because there are parentheses, it'll be just as fast and less risky to use our answer choices. The first rule of back solving is that you need to identify a target number. The target number is the answer to the problem given in the question. In this problem, the answer to the equation is negative 3. If you plug in a value for x, you want the left side of the equation to work out to negative 3. Our second rule is that you need to be absolutely sure about what your answer choices represent. In this case, they're all possible values for x, so label them. Let's start with the middle choice. Plug choice C, 1 fourth, in for x. If we do that, we get 4 times 1 fourth minus the sum of negative 2 times 1 fourth plus 5. After we've written it out, let's plug it into our calculator. Type in 4 times 1 fourth minus the sum of negative 2 times 1 fourth plus 5. Hit enter and we get negative 3.5. Since negative 3.5 is less than negative 3, we can cross out C with confidence. So where do we go from here? Well, it seems like we need a larger number. For now, let's cross out answer choices A and B, but we can revisit these two answer choices if the others don't work out. Let's try D. This time, let's go straight to the calculator. If we plug in 1 third for x, our expression becomes 4 times 1 third minus the sum of negative 2 times 1 third plus 5. Okay, now let's hit enter. Boom, we get negative 3. That's it, D is our answer. Okay, now it's time for that celebration. Cue the confetti, please. So one last thing about back solving. You might be tempted to check all your answer choices, but you don't need to waste time doing that if you find one that works. Just move on to the next question with the extra time this strategy provided you. The test questions are designed to only work with one answer choice or they'd have to throw the question out. Keep this strategy in your back pocket to solve any challenging ACT problem that asks for the value of a particular variable and keep on practicing. Now that you've learned about back solving, make sure you solve some of the many practice problems available throughout this course.